Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here. Welcome back to more Let's Play Kirby 64, The Crystal Shards. Uh, last time we started our grand adventure with the planet Plopstar, or Popstar, not Plopstar. And today we are going to continue with the rest of Popstar, so let us get started with level 3. So yeah, very quickly, I do want to apologize for... Uh, I probably don't have to apologize, but... Um, just for the kind of the commentary of the last video, I felt kind of rushed at the very end of the video, which, I don't know, probably didn't sound that bad, because I'm very harsh myself when it comes to commentary. But still, I did feel kind of rushed. I was trying to actually finish the video before I got a text from my friend, and sure enough, uh, I got the text at the very end of the video. So, yeah, I was kind of running behind, but whatever. I'm sure it wasn't that bad. Anyway, here's actually Double Bomb, uh, where you shoot, actually, missiles out of your mouth. Uh, the missiles home in on enemies, which is very helpful. Definitely a cool power-up, in my own honest opinion. Uh, but I'm actually going to get rid of it, because for this level, we actually need a power-up combo of Double Cutter. And this is what Double Cutter looks like. That is a freaking huge Cutter Beam. Or... Cutter blade, not beam. I have no idea what I'm saying. But yeah, double cutter is pretty cool. And generally, all of the double power-ups, like... And by double power-ups, I mean, you know, double of the same power-ups. All those power-ups are very cool and effective when it comes to combat. Uh, there might be one that I'm not thinking of at this moment, but I do love the majority of these power-ups. Especially this one. This one can definitely take out a lot of enemies from afar. Because it has a really good range. It doesn't look like it would be that effective, but it really is. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the first video, despite how rushed I might have sounded. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the project. This really is one of my all-time favorite games. Um, definitely not my favorite N64 game. Uh, that honor belongs to... Actually, it's even hard to say. There are a lot of games I love for the 64. Paper Mario, Majora's Mask, Banjo-Kazooie. The list kind of goes on for me, honestly, but this game is definitely up there. I remember uh, when I first got this game. Uh, I believe it was the summer of 2000. Yeah, that sounds about right, because that was the year before the uh, Nintendo 64 kind of died out. But yeah, I remember uh, getting this game and Mario Tennis around the same time, and I played those games pretty much non-stop that entire summer. I really did love those two games, and that was like a really good summer for gaming. I mean, even for just those two games, it was a great summer. And yeah, in that room you kind of witnessed uh, Adeline's special talents, uh, where he can actually uh, paint... Um, Maxim tomatoes or extra lives. He'll give you a tomato if you're running low on health, and he'll give you an extra life if you're at full health, so keep that in mind. And I could probably actually get rid of Double Cutter now, especially since we're getting some new power-ups here. I believe the Razor Blades are just uh, the Cutter power-up. But I think we actually get uh, the Fire power-up here in a little bit, so... I'll be using the Fire Sword, which is actually the first, uh, non-similar... No, wait, no, no, it wasn't. It was Fire and Needle. That was the first double non-similar power-up I used. But whatever, I love the Fire Sword, and it should actually be pretty helpful in taking out, uh, not only this boss, but also the, um, uh, final boss of the world, too, so... It's a very good power-up to have. Okay, so this castle actually belongs to King Dedede. And of course, King Dedede is not one for reasoning with Kirby. But he is one for getting possessed, because this is the third time King Dedede has been possessed by Dark Matter. I would figure he'd be used to it by now, but 
I guess you can't really say that for sure, since he doesn't really have a stable mind right now. But yeah, to be very cheap, he can just do this. <laughs> That's why I love the Fire Sword. It can, it can be pretty cheap when it comes to bosses like that. But there we go, uh, we got King DD back to his senses. And Waddle D actually wants King DD to come with us. Which, he has a hard time deciding at first, but he does decide to come with us, so here he is. He's now part of our Motley crew. And let's see if I can go for the enemy card again. Hooray! And here we are, the first boss of Popstar, or the first main boss, world boss of the game. And of course, it's our good friend of ours, Wispy Woods. In 3D! Kind of. I mean, this is kind of a weird boss fight in my own honest opinion, but... I guess this is really, at the time anyway, all they really could have done for... You know, a 3D Wispy Woods boss fight. But yeah, this is pretty easy. Uh, first, destroy Wispy's children, as cool as that might sound. Then he gets angry, and he will try to... He actually succeeded, but he'll hit you with his roots. When that happens, you just have to attack his roots with um, either these apples or whatever power you have. And if you're lucky, you can actually um, hit two roots in one attacking round. It's really hard to do, though. You need, like, certain power-ups for that to work. Okay, yeah, it didn't quite work, but I did make quick work of him. As usual, Wispy has never been known for being that much of a challenging boss. And after we finish a world, the Crystal Shard will tell us where we need to go next. So now we're going to go to this uh, crumbled up planet called Rockstar. So yeah, so let's get started with Rockstar. And this uh, level will actually use probably my most favorite power-up of the entire game. Oh, by the way, here's Normal Needle. I've already seen Fire and Needle, so don't need to show that. Uh, but basically, we need to look out for Stone and Spark. I believe we can find stone very early on in this level. I'm actually kind of surprised we haven't seen it yet. Wait, what are these enemies? Oh, they're also Needle. Um, here's Double Needle, which is actually really cool. Um, Kirby has a bunch of different pointy objects. A Bing Stinger, a uh, fork, a cactus, a pencil, a compass, a um, needle, like a doctor needle, and uh, a nail, and I forget what those little uh, spiral things are called, but whatever. Uh, here's stone, just turn into a small little rock and you can roll around. And here is double stone, which is a giant rock, <laughs> and you can actually walk around with it too, so... Kirby can kind of be his own little wrecking machine right here, which is pretty cool. But um, I actually need a different combo to actually get a future Crystal Shard, so I'm just going to take Normal Stone for the time being. One thing that would have been cool if you, is if you could have actually like gotten rid, like if you had a double power-up, if you could actually get rid of one of the power-ups, but that would be kind of cheap, so eh, probably not. Still, though, something the game developers could have thought about. And here we have some uh, Diglett wannabes. There's actually a few Pokemon in this game, or a few enemies in this game that could resemble Pokemon. Like, I know I always call those enemies Diglets. And there were a few other um, enemies that... Um, I'll just go ahead and spoil it, but there's like an enemy that I used to call Cubone. And another one I used to call Magic Herb. Oh, 
And I could have actually gotten stone and needle in the last room since there are more stone enemies in here, but I'll go ahead and keep normal stone. Speaking of needle, I can actually get it right here, too. But I'm not gonna bother with this. Oh, and actually, uh, fun fact, this is actually the first part of Kirby 64 I ever played. Because, I mean, I, I told you guys I bought this game in the summer of 2000. And the day I actually went to go pick the game up, uh, they actually had a demo of this game. And uh, the demo that was set up was actually at this point right here, so... This was technically the first I actually saw of Kirby 64. This little scrolling segment right here. Just a cool little fun fact for you guys. But yeah, just keep climbing, uh, make sure you don't get trapped, otherwise you will instantly die if you get smashed against the blocks. It's not very hard though, the quicksand moves pretty slowly. And at the end here, Waddle Dee will actually rescue us, so... Thank you, Waddle Dee. But here we go. Uh, notice that this block is actually colored yellow and brown. And notice that the stone ability is colored brown. So, we gotta find a power-up that is the color yellow. And, obviously, since I've already mentioned it anyway, um, that is the spark power-up. And I'll go ahead and roll all the way down the hill. Here we go, here's Spark. And I just failed ethically. I can't believe I missed. Which is a shame, because I knew he was going to jump, too, and I just, you know, wasn't paying attention. Oh, well, I'll probably have to replay that level. And, uh, oh, there's Cubone. I guess it doesn't really look like Cubone that much, but still, I always call it Cubone. Okay, so I don't know if I can actually get it this time, but I'll try. Nope, I got nothing. Aw, poor Kirby. Okay, well, I actually need to go back in this level to get that crystal shard, and, uh... Yeah, I guess I'll just see you guys when I get there. Okay, here I am, guys. I'm back, and I actually have stone and electricity now, or spark, whatever you want to call this power-up. And the power-up you get is this giant stone electric yo-yo thing, which is just awesome. I don't know why, I really love this power-up. It's just really cool how you can actually, you know... It's, it's kind of a long-range weapon, yet a melee weapon at the same time. And you can try to, you know, dodge the uh, stone to actually have it, you know, go around the screen for a lot longer. So, I don't know, I just always like this power-up. It is probably my favorite one, just in my opinion. Anyway, use this to break that, and we get the crystal shard. And after you get all the shards, you can actually just, you know, leave the level by hitting try again. And there, all of the uh, shards are accounted for. Uh, now, I don't actually have enough time to start the next level, but since I do have a little bit of time left, uh, I am going to show something off very quickly, so... Let me very quickly reset my system. I had to get out of my chair to actually shut it off, so... Pardon me for that. Anyway, if we actually go to our file... And wow, we're already 20% done with the game. Uh, yeah, this is a very short game, by the way, so don't expect this project to go on for too long. Anyway, let's go to the options screen. Um, we actually have mini games, enemy info, and theater. Uh, mini games, I will be showing these off at the very end of the project in their own little bonus video. Uh, enemy info is actually the collector cards I was talking about. Um, there are, let's see, one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I guess there's 81, although I don't remember if uh, all of the slots on this one are taken up. But anyway, these are the collector cards that you can collect. And you can basically look at all the enemies in the game. Uh, the cards are random, by the way. There's no, like, specific order or anything. And you basically see what the enemy is, what the enemy's name is, and if they have a power-up, it shows that off in the top left corner, so this is actually an ice enemy, and this one is a cutter enemy, this is the uh, fishbone, and then we have these guys, which are the goblins. 
<laughs> that's actually kind of creative, because they gobble things up. Uh, but yeah, that's basically what the enemy collector cards do. And I guess I can just, you know, generally show these off at the end of some videos if I'm, you know, kind of running short with time. But we'll see what happens. And yeah, that's basically all for enemy info. And for theater, it's basically all of the cinematic scenes you can see in the game. Uh, you don't get all of them right off the bat. You have to actually go through the game to get all of them. But yeah, that's basically what those are. In settings, we just have you know, some sound options and display options where you can actually change the bottom of the, um, you know, of the game screen, which has, you know, your life bar and the health bar and everything. You can actually change it to match one of these five formats. And I guess that's something I could do. I could try to change these up, change these up every few videos. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to display two. Uh, but yeah, that's basically all I wanted to show off. Uh, this has been Slim Kirby. I'll see you guys next time for more Let's Play Kirby 64 The Crystal Shards when we go back to Rockstar. Later, folks.